I'm really excited to launch the first session of today, the India UK Roundtable. We know that health is connected across sectors, and today's panel reflects that. We're really lucky to have high profile innovators and leaders in their professions join us to talk about the relationship between the UK and India and how we can work together to support each other and the health systems. Joining the round table today, we have Dr. Shashank Wickram, the Consul General of India, Dr. Amandeep Singh, President of the Resident Doctors Association at All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, Shala Hassan, the Executive Director of the Manchester India Partnership, Tista Chakravati Ganon, the Head of Outreach at the General Medical Council, Mr. Salva Saker, a consultant surgeon, director of surgery at the Christie NHS Foundation Trust and the chair of the British Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, the Northwest chapter. And myself, your host, and I'll be helping moderate the session. I'm a doctor based in Manchester uh, and also work closely with the Global Health Department at Health Education England uh, and as a clinical entrepreneur fellow at NHS England. Um, and just to give provide some backdrop to, to today's conversation, um, Health Careers Live is all about bringing together people from across different backgrounds to support the health workforce. Um, this began in 2017 as a National Health Careers Conference in Manchester, supporting aspiring healthcare professionals and really providing opportunity across the field to ensure people can pursue the careers of their choice. Um, and ultimately contribute to an improved health system. And today is very much the next chapter of that journey, um, seeing how we can work together across countries. And I'm really excited that everyone's been able to, to make today and give up their valuable time this Saturday um, to help us achieve that goal. So without further ado, um, if I'd just like to ask everyone to introduce themselves. Um, if we can start with um, Shashank. Hi, uh, thank you so much. And um, well, I am uh, I'm Dr. Shashank Vikram, and I am the Consul General of India for Midlands and North of England. And uh, healthcare sector, I mean, it, we are only supposed to introduce ourselves, so that, that is the introduction. And I can only add the line to it is that uh, healthcare sector is one of the priority sectors between India and UK. And uh, we look forward to its further strengthening because we understand that there is a lot of complementarities between the two healthcare systems. And as we go forward, you know, I would like to dwell on it further. Really good to have you join, particularly, I think, you know, as a medic by background, I think, you know, you're bringing in such unique insights in this space. Um, so th thank you for that, Shashank. Um, Tista. Hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the panel. It's, it's really good to be here. Um, so by way of brief background, I've been working in healthcare for 25 years now. Uh, my non-GMC work is with survivors of abuse. I, I still do that work. And it was through that that many years ago I became interested in systems and what can go wrong with uh, for patients when systems don't collaborate well together. And that got me interested in regulation. So just over 10 years ago, I joined the GMC, the General Medical Council, and was asked to set up a support service for uh, doctors on the ground. And uh, that's what I now uh, head up with colleagues, the outreach service. And as part of that, I also head up our induction programme for internationally qualified medical graduates. So that's why I'm here today. Amazing. And um, Tess has been here from the very beginning in 2017 uh, when we first launched this conference. So um, we're so thankful for your continued support. Um, and particularly today for international medical graduates um, looking to, you know, to, to start work in the NHS. So um, thank you so much, Hester. Um, moving on to Amandeep. And Amandeep's joining us all the way from New Delhi in India. 
So a very good afternoon. Uh, I am Dr. Amandeep Singh and I am a senior resident doctor in Department of Medicine and Infectious Diseases in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. And along with this, I am the current president of uh, Resident Doctors Association. It's a group of 2500 uh, resident doctors of various specialities who come across India and other countries to study in All India Institute. We do a lot of activities, whether it is related to research and along with that, uh, in the uh, uh, current time of COVID, we have uh, XLR in online uh, education through uh, various modes and telemedicine. As we see that there is a India has a large population and we see large number of patients and uh, during the COVID pandemic, when lockdown was there, we were there and the association was uh, very much helpful for the patients. So uh, I thank uh, and I'm glad to be a part of this and being uh, I'm, I'm still a student, but I would like I'm thinking that I will gain a lot from this session. Thank you so much. Great, we're so, we're so lucky to have you and, and thank you for, for making time to, to join us today, Amandeep. Um, and just to let everyone, I'm not being rude when I stare down. I've uh, I have my iPad with the, with all the all the uh, the exciting social media buzz and 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 the chats from the conference. So uh, I will be occasionally uh, looking down. Um, and if we can move on to Shella. Uh, good morning, everyone in the UK, and good afternoon to everyone in India. Um, I am Shella Hassan, and I have recently taken over as the executive director for the Manchester India Partnership. Not a doctor like the rest of you. Um, I have built a career on the UK India economic bilateral relationship uh, for the last 14 years, starting with the British Deputy High Commission in Calcutta and then moving on to uh, heading the Confederation of British Industry uh, for the last nine years in Delhi. Uh, I started my career as a business journalist uh, with Business Standard newspaper in India. Um, so UK India uh, economic, uh, you know, uh, the whole dialogue is good enough to build a career on. And I, I guess I'm one of those people who has done that. And uh, healthcare is one of the uh, focus areas, not only of UK between UK and India, but also between the Greater Manchester region and India. Um, uh, so, um, you know, especially digital health going forward, you know, and lessons learned during the uh, pandemic. Uh, so um, very much and uh, people ask, you know, why India and why Manchester? Um, first of all, India is going to be the fastest growing economy uh, for the next financial for this current financial year and the next. So, you know, all the more reason to engage with India and then, uh, you know, the challenges that uh, we face here as well as in India are, are, very, are very similar, especially, you know, when dealing with the pandemic and other um, issues. So I think I'll stop here. I think my, uh, and, you know, perhaps catch up when the discussion is on. Thank you. It's uh, great to have you with us, Shella. And um, I, I don't think, you know, arguably as a doctor by background, I don't always think that, uh, you know, um, just because you're a doctor or a clinician by background, that's, uh, uh, that's the only uh, qualified opinion. And we're really grateful to have you and, and, and the rest of the panel join us because we all bring such unique insights from you know, the varied backgrounds that, that we all have. Um, so, so, so thank you. Um, and um, Selva Saker, um, if you could um, introduce yourself and um, tell us about your work and all the amazing work that BAPIO has been doing in this space. Uh, thank you, uh, Rajiv. Um, I'm uh, Salva Sekar. I'm a colorectal surgeon based at the Christie, uh, which is the largest single site cancer center in UK and in Europe. Um, and I represent this forum as the uh, chair for the Northwest BAPIO. Uh, BAPIO has got regional divisions and we celebrated 25 years of uh, a successful uh, functioning Indian organization in UK last month. Uh, it was started initially um, as an organization to support the uh, mainly doctors. Now it is moved to healthcare professionals as 
There are uh, not just doctors uh, coming from India. There are a lot more, as a matter of fact, a lot more healthcare, allied healthcare professionals who come from India now. Um, and uh, the uh, the scope of uh, the organization has uh, uh, increased. Uh, now we are involved in education, research. As a matter of fact, a fantastic work has been done recently uh, called the Bridging the Gap uh, paper, which looked at uh, uh, various areas where um, there are gaps which can be addressed. And it's not just relevant for uh, people coming from India. As a matter of fact, any overseas international medical graduate is the way I would put it. And um, it is led by our president, uh, uh, Dr. Ramesh Mehta, and chaired by J.S. Bamra. Uh, pandemic, um, unfortunately, um, has been a big um, setback for uh, everyone, as we all are fully aware, but BAPIO has done a fantastic work during this time. Um, as we all know, uh, people from the uh, Black and Ethnic Minority Group were uh, affected um, disproportionately um, during the COVID pandemic for various reasons, and that was put to front line by BAPIO and similar organizations. And uh, we have also been involved in work in India because the pandemic initially affected more the European uh, Europe and then uh, the second wave when India was affected. Uh, BAPIO uh, took the front line and also supported in uh, providing equipments, funds, working with various organizations in India and the British High Commission and also the National Health Assembly. And there is still ongoing a lot of collaboration between India and UK. Uh, through BAPIO and also we do a similar sort of work through the CRISTI um, which has an international um, arm um, and um, so there is a lot of international collaboration mainly with India. Thank you. Thanks so much for, for sharing all the all the amazing work that you've been doing and um, I think you know the, the introductions themselves have already generated so much food for thoughts and we want this to be a very informal conversation, um, so please feel free if you're watching at home or tuning in um, across, you know, the UK, India, or, or you know, around the world. Please do feel free to share your thoughts with our team, and we can help bring them to the discussion. Um, so I, th I think you know um, you've you, you raised a very valuable point, um, Salvaseco, around bridging the gap, and um, I, I know that there's lots of work being done in this space. Um, I wonder if we can all, you know, share a bit more about the work going on um, to support um, Indian and UK graduates. Um, so if we can start with Tista. Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing that is probably really useful to, to note is that we've got uh, in a register of uh, 300,000 doctors in the UK, 30,000 qualified in India. That's larger than any geographical region uh, outside of the UK, never mind a country. So, um, so you know, I I India and our relationship with India is incredibly, incredibly important. And that means that in terms of work going on, uh, we do a lot of work with networks, uh, di diaspora networks, for example, as well as more formal organisations like BAPIO. And um, that that's really to ensure that we maintain but also strengthen relationships and the work that um, uh, the, the bridging the gap work that self sec has referred to that's going to be incredibly important for a number of areas that are if you will flagship programs for us going forward so for example our core standards good medical practice um, uh, the work that we're doing for that bridging the gap is helping to inform so these links that's just illustrative of how these links are incredibly important more broadly we run uh, induction I've touched on it briefly but we run induction for doctors new to the UK 
And that induction looks at everything from um, medico legal differences to actually welcoming and thanking international colleagues for all they bring. Sometimes I think the focus with international medical graduates, IMGs, can be what support do they need? And of course, support is needed, but that. Um, but that weight of thinking about what support is needed can sometimes be um, uh, can sometimes forget that actually there's a huge amount of value as well that we also need to focus on to spread learning. So that induction looks at all of that, but also things like culture shock. And that can be everything from, oh, my God, I knew it was cold, but I didn't realise it was this cold. To I saw um, a tweet this morning from Adam Rutherford, the scientist, saying uh, he'd shared a tweet for, from an American who's saying every time I leave a lift or, or an elevator, as he put it, I always say, have a great day. And Adam Rutherford quoted the tweet saying, please don't do this in England. So all of these cultural quirks that people simply can't be familiar with without proper support, that's what one of the things that we're trying to do through induction. And, uh, uh, and I think once we start talking a little bit more today about collaboration, I've got some thoughts on, on what we might do there, but hopefully that gives you gives us an overview to start with. Thank you, Tester. I was wondering if anyone on the panel would like to, to share their thoughts. Yeah, um, just to uh, um, co come in, if that is OK, I, th I think I agree with what Tisha is saying. Um, uh, one of the um, issues what we uh, uh, the GMC has done is this induction program, which is great because um, when you speak to trainees uh, coming from India, it, it is not the it is not the knowledge where they lack. Knowledge is the same. Uh, you know, uh, when uh, Sheila was mentioning about she's not a medic, it is it is not that which is an issue at all here. It is the non-medical issues, which is the uh, issue where we need to collaborate. Because medicine, there are, there are set format of teaching, training, which has been done over years or decades or even centuries, which is the same throughout the world. There's nothing um, different. We can't change history. We can't change the practice. But what we can change is the culture. What we what we are struggling is same as the example what Tisha was mentioning. Have a good day. It's I, I spent a year um, at the Mayo, and I can say that what they use, uh, the terminology is what they use. If I use in UK, it is not acceptable. And we say that the Western world is similar. It is not. It is each host, each country has different uh, uh, different ways of communication. What is acceptable? What is not acceptable? When we have trainees coming from India. Uh, um, when they basically they're not bothered about the diagnosis which they can get to it is how to engage with the allied health professionals what is an acceptable way of communication with the patient uh, how do they introduce themselves it is that those sort of a things is what is an issue so it is a non um, it is a non sort of a medical side of things uh, is what the issue is and that is where I think the work GMC is doing and what BAPU and other organizations are focusing on, which is great, um, is where uh, we can wor work together and then find a common theme to support. Because going forward, the issues in healthcare is global. It is no more UK or you know um, various countries. It, you know we are having this conversation where Amandeep is from India and he is participating it uh, from India now. So. What COVID has done is has brought us together and we need to look at solutions which will help things to uh, move forward globally for uh, you know, the better care for our patients. Thank you. I think there's really valuable points. I've just um, left the screen to give more airtime to our, our esteemed guests. And um, I think that's a really valuable point there because even within the UK in training, there are different cultures and different systems. And um, when we move on from job to job, there's always that period where, you know, about getting to grips with things. And 
I think that's where the support is really crucial. Um, uh, but arguably, people coming, coming from overseas then really do need that, the, the extra support, because cause from, you know, from my personal background, we've hopefully been preparing for this over the five years of medical school to work in different settings. And um, I think that's, it's really valuable that, you know, now that the work that you're leading, sister, with the Welcome to UK practice workshops and, um, and more broadly, I know BAPIO have been doing a tremendous amount, particularly last year, um, to support doctors that were stranded um, with the cancellation of exams. Um, so working together to support each other, I think, has been really important. Um, a bit of a, 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 a you know a contentious point really I think is also looking at the, the the support for both health systems and I know that of course lots of people are joining the NHS and we have a huge shortage of staff um, but that's also you know some may say is leading to a brain drain um, and I was wondering what um, what everyone's thoughts were on that and how we can actually work more effectively to support both health systems I wonder if um, uh, Dr. Wickram has any any thoughts on that at all? Uh, well, uh, thank you for uh, raising that point also. And, uh, you know, I was uh, listening to the discussion so far. See, uh, between India and UK, I would say, you know, as uh, one of the speakers was mentioning, word is a small place. And after COVID, you know, it has made us realize that that how actually how close we are associated with each other, no matter what part of the world we are living in and uh, India and UK healthcare systems they have a lot by which they can help each other in the sense you know like when you see at the NHS the way in which it has been brought up it's a uh, it has the it has so the systems are uh, are there there are so many innovations which are happening in UK similarly in India when you see it in last 30 40 years you know the way in which healthcare sector has developed across all sectors demand for good health care across sectors that whether it is government or it is private because in India private sector plays a very big and important role also in providing health care that it has also come so like very recently you know when we saw that Oxford AstraZeneca thing there was a UK innovation which was put at a scale in India and eventually been so there are a lot of complementarities between the two systems and uh, that is why you know, and also, you know, English being a common language, that is also good help. I think uh, that is one of the reason when for the Indian healthcare professionals that UK is a country where they look forward to when they go want to, want to go out for training, for, you know, for experience purposes. And I personally feel in today's world, you know, there is nothing which is like permanent migration. You know, we are living in circular economies. The people move from one country to another country for training, and then they might actually go to a third country and settle. And for many of those, many of us who come from India, and here we are talking about healthcare professionals, so all of them are well-informed people about their career, about their responsibility to, the, uh, to their family and country and, uh, you know, uh, career. So they are well-informed people and they must have option to uh, take an informed choice ab about the place where they think that they would get a better training or a better exposure and uh, many of them i know would eventually actually return to india so that always goes on so but my take in the whole thing is that while complementarities do exist how seamless can you make it no, why somebody is studying in a premier institute in India is still to clarify PLAP, you know. I don't get it. So same same issues like those, you know. If you say the fact is that Indian doctors and, you know, uh, and India has now, I think, over a century old tradition of, uh, you know, medicine in modern medicine, I would say, when it comes to our own Ayurveda, it would be it will be running in thousands of years. So we have we are we are indian doctors today are regarded with you know the demand is everywhere so if it if they don't come to uk they would they might tomorrow have might migrate to a third or a fourth country even for a training or a, for a post or a residentship or maybe for jobs those things will continue but if we want to bring that traffic to uk india and for 
for both the countries and i would say especially for the uk to ensure that uh, anybody should be welcomed because given the strain in the system and the kind of um, uh, the kind of we see here in uk the fact is any well qualified person who is coming in the should be welcomed because and his or her journey can be done in that regard it's good and um, as i told you you know uh, the strongest link in health okay are actually indian origin health professionals working in uk because even when they are working in been there for i know so much they want to contribute back so many of them actually visit india so many of them are actually supporting hospital so much of you know they have so still so much of contact with their peer and some of them eventually actually go back one of my friends just went back to establish a hospital in india so in today's world i feel you know we are actually very closely connected to thank you And that's uh, a, lots of valuable points there, Shashank. And I, I wonder why we can't all have global health passports, you know, where we can, you know, almost uh, be catapulted in different com in different systems. And uh, and but you know, COVID, you know, has really shown that uh, you know through telemedicine and through you know supporting each other, I think we've all learned a lot from our colleagues internationally around supporting healthcare delivery. Um, but, but, you know, when the when things have been particularly bad in each health system, I think we've we've gained so much as well through that knowledge exchange. Um, so you know, I, I for one would really look forward to how we can make those how we can make those credentials more universal um, and more global. And I think um, I wonder, test over here with the the GMC work around the medical licensing assessment now being for all UK and international. Um, doctors is, is a step in that direction. Um, Amandeep, it'd be great to, to hear your views on, on, on the matter. So, uh, <clears throat> thank you. Actually, what COVID-19 pandemic has asked everyone of us that uh, why there was a gap in the health of uh, the world that we need to bridge, that is very important. Because uh, we were seeing, we were uh, as the whole world was seeing that it's a common enemy, and we all were working together to get a cure of COVID-19. So now we have started more of collaboration with the UK and with various other countries. So that is one thing. What, what we have to correct, and we have to not only bridge the gap, but we have to make a new road also, so that the coming students who are uh, this really eager to join uh, an institute in the UK, like FAM from Ames, New Delhi. There are many students preparing for PLAB and they are doing surgical oncology specialities and they're playing, preparing PLAB to get uh, into the UK. As Sir has said, that why there is a need of that PLAB, that is one thing which is important. And second thing is, as Sir has rightly said, that uh, it's not the difference in intellectual, it is the difference in the other things like the medical uh, council uh, registration. And along with that, if I say India being a developing country, affect with the finance is also one thing which is very important because there are many students who are brilliant but they are eager to join UK and various places, but they are not having so much of opportunities for that. I being in a premier institute of India, AIMS New Delhi, we provide, it provides a lot of opportunities to students, a lot of interns, students comes from UK and from other countries to India to see the culture of how we are treating the patients in the wards. And one thing which we also learn from them that, like Sarah said, that to how to deal with the patients, talking, greeting the patients. And this is the culture we want to promote in India. And we and if we see and this is the patients, we are seeing a lot of tuberculosis, malaria and various type of dengue patients we are seeing. And they see that this much of like, you know, what if you see 20, 30 dengue patients and they say that, oh, my God, this is this is how much we have. We haven't seen. So that is one thing which gets improved with uh, and the culture we get to know with each other that is uh, that is uh, uh, important and we want that this relationship should be more and more of easier so that 
the science the health science must develop in the next coming 50 or 100 years to go thank you Rajiv, thanks, can i just uh, yeah absolutely okay um uh, thanks uh, uh, Vic, uh, dr vikram and uh, um, amandeep singh um basically i've been in uk for 25 years you know when when i came in 1990s the gap was huge whereas i i don't think there is any more gap it is each uh, uh, side india has got its own strengths uk has got its own strengths now so we need to look at how we work in a way that benefits both um not just the healthcare sector because dr uh, hassan is there to look at the wider picture of india uk partnership so um what what i see um is um say for example in in surgery now um there, there was there's only one company which was producing the robot which was an um, american company and uh, recently in the last 2 to 3 years there have been two more companies who have come in one is from cambridge another one is a metronic which is the largest uh, uh, healthcare um, company in the world both the companies did the trials in india they didn't do the trials in uk they didn't do the trials in europe or us it because india provides a platform where these trials are being facilitated in a, in a, in a way which the companies find easy to work with so things have changed in india there is there's le- less of a bureaucratic process i think that is the reason why these companies are able to do these trials and another reason probably um i may be naive here because the population is huge there's a big um you know the clinical resources are there for people to do a trial because if you look at the population you know here in uk we're talking about 60 million whereas there it is 1.3 billion so if someone wants to do a trial that is the place to be in so that is how india has moved forward whereas um when when i look at some of the um areas in healthcare is the governance is still an issue unfortunately in india and that is why to address dr uh, vikram's question about why is someone from a premier institute not getting recognized when we we do a, a masters program here in manchester for um, not just for the indian uh, uh, sort of subcontinent healthcare professionals but we do it for um uh, you know me- medics for the international medical graduate but the problem is when a certificate comes from india when a medical graduate comes from it is difficult to know where they have qualified from i know for certain there are people like um qualified like same as amandeep singh from aims or uh, pgi chandigarh or jipma they, they are they are in a different league whereas some of the institutions they have um very you, you know as soon as you uh, get these trainees coming in there's a huge difference and because of this difference is why um everyone gets tarnished the same way that you know you need to get through this process and and that how do we address that i think there is a role for both india to play and for the uk to play absolutely there will be one exam where one assessment where you can you can make sure that so uh, uh healthcare professionals get through that to get into the system because at the end of the day uk obviously will be protective of its healthcare sector and for its patients and they want to make sure that they get the best whereas india if the, if we want to prove ourselves have to make sure that the colleges are of a similar league so there is work for both sides to be done it is not like well why is uk not doing it why is the vaccine a uh, passport not agreed it is because of the inherent issues and i'm i i i come from india as i mentioned but there are issues there which we need to address the governance side of things i'm not saying that everything is fine here whereas at the same time looking back at what india can offer for the uk at the moment in surgeries the volume of cases what happens in it is huge the trainees here uh, you know we talk about patients being affected during covid the next best Uh, example of who has been affected is a surgical trainees you can watch videos you can watch youtube you can watch webinars you can be uh, i'm not saying i'm not i'm not downgrading medicine please don't mistake me what i'm saying is you can learn the facts whereas surgery you need to have your hands on you need you can go through simulation but you need to have your practice in patients under supervision and india has got a huge amount of you know when we have meetings between surgical communities in india and uk we talk about 10 cases 20 cases whereas they talk about hundreds and thousands and that is the level of at which the surgery uh, numbers are there in india and for uk trainees 
the best place now to go and get trained in surgery to get your volumes up is in India. And that is the way India has to promote what they have. Like what Amandeep Singh said, the infectious diseases. It, it is not seen here anymore because of various reasons, which we all know. Whereas that is a good clinical um, space for uh, colleagues from here who want to practice in the, um, uh, you know, health, infectious disease uh, or do research or education, th uh, it, that is a place. And another thing is what I, I work in oncology, so I can say a lot of these trials where which we use as treatment uh, have been done in Western population. And I know for certain speaking to colleagues in India, a lot of them don't work or the toxicity is very high because of the chemotherapy and things, the dosage needs to be adjusted. So these companies are now moving to India for trials because they see that that is the population which gives the numbers for them to complete the trials within a shorter period rather than waiting through uh, years and years because the numbers are not there. So I think we need to look at opportunities on both sides. And I, as I agree with Dr. Vikram, it is a circular economy and there's no more brain drain. I think it, there was a time pre-COVID where we were talking about reverse brain drain. People were going from here to India. Why, why do we need to have this brain drain or reverse brain drain? We need to make sure that colleagues from here can go on a sabbatical to India at, a, at a, you know when I, I i used to go to india before the covid at least three to four times and when i and when i go there i go into hospitals i see the practice and when you come back here when you work in the nhs you think how privileged we are with the setup and how how much facilities we have compared to what happens in india but i at the same time when i'm in india i see how much innovation goes on because because of the necessity people innovate people find ways you know in surgery uh, for a hernia mesh, people were using mosquito nets. People were laughing about it. But now we are talking about sustainability, where we want to use equipments again and again, reusable, as long as there is enough evidence to suggest the use and throw things have gone now. We are talking about. So I think there's a lot we can bring together and find best ways to work. And as I've already alluded to, the you know uh, it's no more countries. The world is very small, and you know we need to work together and then find what is best for healthcare professionals and for the patients. Thanks. I think that's, I think that's really powerful really reflections, powerful there. reflections uh, there. Can I, uh, can I come in here just for a second? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm loving the discussions actually, you know, it's very free flowing and, and, and I know we, if we're all okay to stay on um, for yeah, five yeah. minutes. Just perhaps, for one second, um, I will just like to make a point. You see, uh, I think Amandeep is here and I am also somebody who has passed through Indian uh, medical colleges. Let me uh, tell Dr. Saab that uh, as far as medical colleges in India are concerned, their standard is pretty high and they are very, very strictly regulated. A, a college which is giving an MBBS degree in India is I think at par with even our average college will be much better than many colleges which are saying, you know, which might be which might have a different status. Just because something is located in some corner of India doesn't and people may not have heard a name of that college does not mean that, you know, I mean, I come from a college, I mean, which has a lot of students with a lot of doctors in this country, but there are so many others from where doctors may not have, have come because, you know, the migration trends also differ. Somebody studying at Ames or somebody is studying in any other capital might might be thinking of giving uh, you know, studying in some uh, uh, some other city in India may not be, but that does not mean, you know, and difference among the students you can see in any class, you know, there would be some guy doing better in surgery and some guy who would be better in endocrinology and some guy who may not be better at anything. So those differences are there, but this I completely disagree that there is such a marked difference between somebody studying at Suppose Maulana Azad Medical College and somebody is studying at uh, in Jabalpur or Kanpur or XYZ that the gap is so much that these guys can't come and train here and rather than they need to go over go an exam uh, and then these people are registered and they by the Medical Council of India their colleges is tightly regulated so I disagree to that secondly on the vaccination point it was a technical thing and UK government had to eventually come to it because our vaccine certifications for Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine it was the same vaccine administered at both the places. The point was taken, taken strongly by India and was resolved. Third thing you asked, you said about the technology. Aman is sitting there. I think you guys must give him two, three minutes. Please do explain themselves, explain people how many patients you see every day. 
the kind kind of queues you have in aims you know if nhs gets that queues even for one day half of the people will hang their coats and run absolutely i just i just <laughs> finished my opd and i've seen 110 patients today only that is that is true and we are the government is bringing next exam also next that is that will also regularize the and bring all students of uh, India on the same platform, whether it is AIMS, PGI, and everyone is uh, the quality of education and the policies are all created by a one board that is Medical Council of India. So everybody sticks to it and uh, whether related to research and all, but uh, definitely differences in the infrastructure is what matters. And like uh, if Institute of National Importance, JIPMA, PGI, AIMS, Definitely the difference is only in the infrastructure and not in the intellectual of, uh, capability of the students. That is uh, what uh, I want to say. Thank you. Uh, can I come in, uh, um, um, Rajiv? I think you know, this is, um, I wish we had uh, longer to ex explore this. And um, I think, uh, you know, I'll, obviously I haven't had much experience in the immune health system, but I was lucky to do an elective at Ames and I was shocked by the volume of patients uh, that were seen every day in the outpatients department. And, uh, you know, I, um, it's, I think we've all got so much to learn from each other, from each health system. And uh, it's really good to see that in the UK now, Health Education England um, value, um, it's not, you know, as you say, it's not a one-way thing, it's a two-way thing. Um, we both, we all have so much to, learn from actually entering different settings, um, learning skills, bringing skills to that setting, and you know, globally allowing care to improve for all of us. Because you know, I know you made very good points around innovation, and you know, often innovation, as, as we've all seen, doesn't, um, you know, is, is, is accentuated in, in times of crisis and in times of high-pressured environments. And I think we've, we've seen that, haven't we? Um, I'm conscious that um, Shella hasn't shared um, much, and I wanted to see if, you, if, if uh, we could um, gain a bit more of an insight into the Manchester India Partnership and, and your role in, in, in the ecosystem. And then, it, and then we'll have um, a few more minutes left for further discussion, if that's okay with everyone. Sure, sure. Th thank you very much, uh, Raji. Just that, you know, Manchester India Partnership is a special purpose vehicle uh, created uh, by the growth company uh, within the aegis of Midas, which is uh, Manchester's inward investment agency for strengthening uh, the relationship between the greater Manchester region and India. And uh, so, you know, that's why I am here. And it's uh, it's not only the commercial diplomacy, but you know, uh, the softer aspects of the relationship, uh, which Tista had mentioned about, you know, it's that common culture which uh, Greater Manchester and India through the living bridge of 50,000, more than 50,000 Indian diaspora, you know, so it's basically that links that comfort level, you know, which we want to leverage on. So having said that, you know, I, um, so that's about Manchester India partnership, but a little bit about the discussion that I was following uh, among the, my esteemed colleagues uh, on the panel. I think, you know, the, pa the patient doctor ratio and the patient nurse ratio uh, in India is is abysmal obviously because you know the population so we need more doctors in india we mean we need more nurses in india and we need a proper um, gp um, system you know rather than people in the remote areas being sent to the expensive um, multi-speciality tertiary hospitals in the metropolitan cities in India. You know, what I think we can learn from the UK example is about the GP system and introduction of GP courses in uh, the medical colleges in the districts, the state-run medical colleges in the districts in India, which, you know, the quality of medical ed education, as uh, Dr. Vikram said, is, you know, comparable to any uh, world-class organization but you know it's just that you know affordable health care keep the people you know where they are and not let them migrate to far away places for better health care so i think that's my little two bit on the medical discussion so just improving the patient uh, doctor and patient nurse ratio i think that is what is something we can help with thank you Thanks, Shell. And someone I'm just seen from social media comment come in that actually the similarity in provision of healthcare because uh, 
in rural settings in, in, in both, both countries, uh, there is you know, a, a lower ratio um, of, of healthcare pro providers for, for patients. So I think that's a shared uh, agenda for both countries there, really, in how we um, not only recruit from those areas, but ensure that um, you know, the workforce is there to support um, the population. Because arguably, um, the the health needs and are actually greater than, than in, in in other settings. So, um, I'd like to um, I'd like to open you know the discussion to the floor now to everyone in around how we can move forwards together and and uh, maybe touch on some of the collaborations that are already ongoing um, between uh, respective organisations. So if I may come in, uh, I think one of the really, really important things is ensuring that we that we meet in this way, that we have fora where we can explore opportunities. And um, I, I'm sure that there are things that we're doing that, w that even for organisations that work closely together, like uh, GMC and BAPIO, th there'll be things that we're doing that, that we're not across and therefore opportunities. So one one of the things that, that we now have at the GMC is an international arm and that international arm and that that it could be uh, shallow you and I speak as well about this because that international arm um, uh, we do work sat at such as looking at where there can be an exchange of ideas whether it be around governance whether it be around systems uh, etc so there could be opportunities there um, I'm sure that there are areas where we've got very much shared interests where we could be a more powerful voice together. So, for example, example to pick one area, discrimination. It, it, it's not a new thing, but I believe that there is a real critical mass now and we mustn't lose that focus that particular focus that, that has come into sharp relief recently. So there is an opportunity there to collaborate and be a more powerful voice together to make improvements, as well as, as, well as areas like induction. So um, yes, those are my immediate thoughts. Talking more and picking those areas where we can be stronger together. Thank you, Tista. And there's the question come in around how NHS colleagues can help with the transition from India to the UK. And I know, you know, both organisations are, are doing so much and equally, you know, it's great to see the Consul General of India. Um, the engagement from, you know, I think has grown so much across all organisations. And I know that's been a, a real, uh, you know, as, as often has often been a barrier around engagement, um, you know, with people, particularly in the in the online world that we all live in. And I think social media and making ourselves more accessible and and you know, obviously so grateful to have you all join us for this to um, really bring you know faces to those organisations and and share you know the efforts and and the dialogue that goes on to to support both health systems. Um, so I'm conscious of time, and I, I wonder if if we can all share you know a quick closing summary, some key points to take away from from today. Um, so if we can begin with um, Shashank. Uh, thank you so much. I think keys are uh, for me, you know, the takeaway as far as India UK healthcare relationship is concerned, you know, as you know, it's one of the priority items when uh, it's a part of our 2030 agenda. Now, there are two, three aspects of it. One is, of course, is the um, the collaboration between the two systems. I think there are a lot of opportunities for that. As Dr. Sir pointed out, clinical trial was is one of them and that is also under consideration. It's all already going on. But there are many others, you know, COVID has also opened a very big, very big thing of, you know, this digital health and which has also led to a lot of digital data being generated, which also then calls for research based on the digital data, which also then leads to the protection of data and how it, what can be shared, how it can be shared and if it can be shared between the two countries in cross platforms. So there are many things like that. And, uh, you know, we recently had a very successful health conference with over 400 uh, policymakers, doctors, and people from industry. And from health industry point of view, as you know, India, UK healthcare, uh, India, UK FTA is in a very advanced stage of negotiation. And hopefully by the end of the year, we should have some good news in that regard. But uh, 
that would change the dynamics as far as the uh, you know the industry part of it is concerned and the third angle and important angle is the human angle which is basically health professionals migration of people whether for training for work for anything i would say between these two countries now that is something which as i felt it has to be always it has to be touched with the human angle the person who is coming you know as i was saying you know, the, there is a lot of you know all those who are doctors know that you know unlike any other profession it takes so many years for you just to become a doctor forget becoming a senior doctor or a senior thing you know you spend so many years in college so after that if you dis- want to go to uk or work in india or wherever the thing should be smoother and that is the best role which bapio gmc and other organizations can play in doing that and with that i would say you know as far as india uk healthcare relationship is concerned it only way is to go up and it will is going to strengthen in the years to come thank you thank you shashank um amandeep yeah so just to add is that the one thing which i feel is in the research Uh, part because I'm being a student of, uh, now and being uh, writing uh, and doing research. So one thing which we face difficulty is about how to uh, get uh, our articles published in a reputed journals of uh, UK, and that is one thing which we have to see. One is related to the finance issues, and it should be that the UK people, because we have a lot of population and we are India Indian doctors are doing great research these days and. even if if people from other countries are coming and doing trials on indian population the indian doctors are doing themselves the trials and some have to limit their publication just because of the cost of publication that is very important so this thing should be like the open access journals should be provided to the india and it should be uh, the research should be promoted and uh, uh, development of science must be done because if, if india is a developing country and uh, we definitely need need that uh, that support and that is uh, that is restricting some of the people from uh, doing research that is that is one thing which is which is to be if if it can be improved by the uh, journals based in the uk whether it is bmj or whether it is others that is what i want to and the second thing is internship is definitely going on uh, from various part uh, from the uk to india people comes and that should be promoted and more often it should be done and uh, after the covid era definitely it will start again and build good relationships between young doctors of the old world and we can see a different world in the coming future thank, thank you and dave salva saker um thanks very much um i i think this forum has been a uh, very useful um i have gained a lot and um what um what i think is going to be a biggest problem post covid is going to be the uh, healthcare professionals well being um i think uh, we already see a big problem in uk there is um there's a lot of sickness which is go- uh, going on some of it is covid related more of it is stress related and um i've always felt one of the ways by which you can address that is people moving around working and having sabbaticals which we touched upon a bit earlier if there is a way by which healthcare professionals from here can work in india if that can be facilitated and a similar way what um dr vikram saab has mentioned about people from india coming to uk there are a lot of in, a lot of uk trained people who are working in india now and i know for certain they're doing exceptionally good work and if they can come to uk to work uh, do cover some of the um, gaps at the same time they feel uh, that they are in a different system and similarly from people from here going back to um, india to do some work because it's not easy going back to india and finding the right place as well it is you know uh, it, it has got its own barriers same as what we have discussed about uk having its own barriers here so if we can facilitate that that will mean that the workforce um in both sides can be kept to a you know reasonable level to provide high care quality for the patient just to touch upon what dr hasan was saying about the infrastructure in india where uh in the peripheries because it is a huge country where uh, do we need medics to go there people who have been i i think uh, you know i don't think we need medics anymore we can train people who are non medics a similar system is coming here allied health professionals who are not nurses who are not medics who are 
are doing extended roles. You don't, uh, you know, there are people who are passionate about uh, healthcare, but they don't have the qualification, but they want to do something good. We can train people in a certain level of competencies as long as they are being trained, as long as they are assessed, and we can do that. So we don't need medics or we don't need nurses, but we can have healthcare professionals who have been, uh, um, de who have developed certain competencies, who can, uh, you know, work in the peripheries, refer appropriately. And this is where the, the digital system um, uh, is useful, because I know of one of my colleagues who is working in an IA hospital uh, where in Pondicherry, where they do a lot of these periphery clinics and they don't, they are not medics or nurses. They are uh, healthcare professionals who have been trained to take scans, eye scans and forward it to the center so that people can people in the center can look at it and AI and things like that can be used to identify patients um, who need to be brought to the center otherwise the rest can be treated at periphery so you provide local care at the local level specialist care at the peri uh, specialist level and I agree with Amandeep saying about research um, I think I think you know this is where it is important. At the moment, it is Western um, sort of uh, Western world design research. Is it the right way? I I don't think so. I think there are a lot which the uh, you know people from the Indian subcontinent, people from the rest of the world can change. It's not just one methodology is the way, and but it will take time, and we need to. And we have got various organizations in surgery where. Uh, we collaborate with Indian organizations. So they're massive organizations, huge amount of clinical materials. But what they ask for is assistance with research, how to get it published, how to. So we work with them and then, you know, it, it benefits both. So I think there's a huge opportunity to collaborate and uh, work so that it helps the well-being of the healthcare professionals and also the patients. Thank you. Thank you. And, and just to share, um, later on today in the program, we will be hearing from clinical entrepreneurs in the NHS and India who've been um, creating innovations to support both health systems in digital health um, and with a particular emphasis around communication um, with Dr. Sandeep Bansal and um, Dr. Tamsin Holland-Brown who's leading the way in supporting children with hearing loss. Um, so please do um, tune into those sessions. And um, Tista will be um, the, will be on shortly as well to share more around the work the GMC are doing to support international medical graduates. So um, hopefully Tessa will be able to grab a break uh, after this session shortly. Um, but over to you, Tessa, for, for, um, for your final words uh, on, on the round table today. Yeah, so, so I think um, my previous comment probably preempted this a little bit in that and given what everyone else has just been saying now, that's just sort of crystallised and galvanised my thoughts earlier um, further. I think we need to meet again. Uh, I think this has been a really rich, useful conversation and I've got so many, um, uh, so many ideas firing in my brain now around what we can do with our international arms. Um, how we can collaborate more on induction, the smoother path element that Shashank, uh, that Dr. Vikram was talking about. I think there's a lot more that we can do there. And in fact, there is a program on at the moment with um, NHS uh, that I uh, that I hope will make a huge difference. But we need to make it happen. So. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say too much more given timing. Uh, uh, my session's due to start imminently, so um, I, I think let's leave it at that. My final thought being huge opportunities to collaborate. So let's reconvene and, and ensure that we can. Great, thank you. And we will be sharing key points from the session um, and with with everyone and, and our attendees. Um, for, for a follow-up, because um, it's been such a rich discussion. Um, Shall I just wanted to ask if you wanted to add anything um, from your side. Uh, you mean me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just, you know, a couple of uh, key takeaways that I've uh, uh, got out of this session was, you know, the whole um, idea of soft skill, which uh, Tista um, uh, spoke about, that's so important uh, to immerse, you know, that immersion, that cultural immersion is so important uh, both, and which works both ways. Uh, so I completely I recognize that. Uh, then common recognition of degrees between uh, both the um, um, uh, both the countries. I think that's also one of the key um, asks in the forthcoming uh, free trade agreement. 
Uh, sec uh, the thirdly is uh, the importance, the growing importance of digital health. You know, that's going to help both uh, countries uh, immensely. And that's one of the key strengths also of Greater Manchester area, uh, digital health. Um, is, and uh, I think uh, all these things will be um, possible to achieve uh, give, uh, if we have the right funding uh, availability. I think uh, we haven't touched upon uh, the funding availability at all on this discussion, but I think, you know, a bi bilateral funds and when governments are talking to each other, these things will get faster facilitated if we have a corpus of funds to be able to push this. So uh, these are my closing remarks and uh, very happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And finally, a big thank you to our esteemed guests for joining us today. It's been a really rich discussion, really looking forward to the future and, and how the India and UK can work more closely together to support both health systems. Um, so a big thank you once again. Um, and please do take a break and we'll be back on screen um, with Tista, who will be telling us more about how you can thrive in the NHS and all the amazing support available to you from the General Medical Council. Thank you once again.